Okay, YouTube. I know I'm in trouble when Randy shows up in the bus with a power tool. <laughs> I'm sitting here doing my thing and he comes out with a jigsaw and I'm like, uh-oh. So um, we've been talking about what are we going to do to the front of our couch. And um, the other thing we've been toying with is we had those two holes um, that were mistakes back in the day when we put our diesel heater in. So you can see that's where the diesel heater is. So let me flip the camera around and show you what we've got going on. So the diesel heater's been working great and it's been really cold here so we've used it quite heavily. Um, and it's great around the hole where I put the metal shielding and everything's working fine. I'm just be more comfortable if I open this up so it can breathe more. Um, from the heat that it gets off the outside of these pipes. So that's, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put that decorative metal on here to cover up this hole anyhow. So instead of leaving just a small hole and covering it, I thought I would just enlarge that hole. Let some of that heat escape, huh? Yep. Okay guys, here's what a little bit of paint and a screen cover can do to the bottom of our couch. This turned out so cool. So by using this screen, it has allowed more air circulation around our diesel heater, which is a win-win. Okay guys, I've got the face of that cabinet under the refrigerator all painted, and it is ready to go back on. It's going to be such a change because we've been looking at that plywood drawer face forever. And all this is is plywood with a little radius on it and some sanding and paint, but it's going to look so, so different, I think. So we're just screwing it in to the back side here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh yeah, it fits good. Perfect. Okay guys, here is that cabinet completed with this handle on it. And we have even drilled a hole for when we travel. We can just put a thumb screw in to secure it. So that is another little project completed. Okay guys, here's another one of those little things that we've just been putting off. So Randy, you see, see what Randy came up with. This is, I love it because it just covers all of this stuff. And it's just a simple little trim piece, but it pulls the, yeah. the stainless all together. Yeah, that will look so cool. And it's removable, so it's not like, you know, if I have to get in there and take those panels off, I can just pop out these three screws. So one thing that we've tried to do throughout the build is make it so everything is removable if we ever needed to get in and fix something. Or if you put it in the wrong place, I don't want that up there. <laughs> The other thing that we've kind of done um, for fun is we took an old shower curtain that we had that I just loved and couldn't part with and we're using it as a curtain to cover up all of the solar panel stuff. Baby, that finished my to-do list for today. I, I know. I got everything that I was hoping to get done today done. So here guys, here's from the other angle. Um, just, you know, as you're coming into the bathroom. It's just one more of those little detail things that finishes it all off. Well, I'm clearing out under the bed here because if you have a sensitive eye, you can see on the Murphy bed how these legs are splayed over to the side a little bit. And uh, basically when I installed the Murphy bed, I picked it up and there's actually a gap underneath that. And I had hopes that when I put the floor down, I could just slide the floor underneath it. But what had happened was that was compressed down so tight that that was not possible. 
And because I was going to do that, there was no reason to anchor it to the floor. The plans never said to anchor it to the floor. At any rate, um, we want to cover up this gap down here and we want to pull those two bottom corners together so that it stays good. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to have to take the shaky tool and shave just a little bit off of that because I can't pull it over because it hits the floor that's underneath it now where we cut that little gap. But then I can just take a piece of two inch angle and I'll just uh, weld an end on it so that I can put some quarter inch bolts on each side and pull those two bottoms together. So that's what I'm trying to do today. The other key thing is that we had to factor in, could we still open the bed? Yeah, because that, so see there, where it's cantilevered forward, it's, everything goes back behind. Um, and the third factor is, that'll help with the floating floor holding it down in place. Exactly. Because we can't get to the back end to install a molding back there. So, a little adjustment because we're doing it in the bus, but it should work out really well. So I was going to paint it white, and Shelly said, Wow, that's the perfect color to match the floor, so maybe I just leave it raw. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> okay, guys, we're making progress. He's made a mess over here. <laughs> he's, he's getting really good at making messes. But we can't find our shaky tool. This is a... Uh, it's for cutting door jams to fit, I think really kind of hard to film it but anyhow that leg is now cut loose so I can move it again the shaky tool was in hiding but I found it so try this side with the shaky tool so that's gonna work I'll go ahead and get that cut through yeah. I can tell you one thing that was a lot easier with the shaky tool and you can see I got it completely loose, but I gotta pull it out of there. Okay, YouTube. <laughs> this was the one thing I was like, ooh, am I gonna be able to get a drill hole down there? But look, right there's where it goes. I can just get it in there. Okay, guys. Welcome to Confessions of a Bus Builder. <laughs> it wouldn't fit over here because this one's actually a little skinnier than that one. I don't tell nobody that, but now you know. So <laughs> I had to go shorten my drill bit so that I could get in here and drill that out. But hopefully now I can install it. Okay guys, this is another one of those things that seemed like fairly simple. <laughs> but uh, the floor of the bus humps up through the center. So I had to trim that metal off down skinnier. And that's not going to look super great. But then I figured it out. If I slot the holes on the end after I install this, I can uh, put a piece of molding on it like this, so essentially it'll look like that, and it'll match the rest of the moldings around the bottom of the of the back room here. So that's what I'm going to do. Just go in here and slot this hole because that thing, this piece of metal was just back just a little bit too far. So if I slot this hole, I could scoot it forward and backwards <laughs> like that. That's going to be the solution. Yeah, so this is one of them little two-hour projects if I'm well into four hours now. <laughs> so now, it's pretty obvious to see the bow in this. You can see it's sticking up there. i got to push it down and make it fit under. So I've got it under there. 
you know, once it's installed, you can't tell, but the, the floor humped up in the middle here. So now I can pull this together with these mechanisms on each side and get these sides back in where they're supposed to be. I can adjust them. I want that sticking out just a little bit like that so that I can install my molding over it like that. I wonder if it clears though. Better check that. <laughs> okay guys, so here's where it, how it swings back in and my clip just barely clears it. But I've got tons of room down here. So I'll just take some off the bottom of this molding and lower it down just a little bit to get good clearance there. So this is gonna work out great. Okay guys, I finally got that back in there. Whew. Made it, had to take it out, make it skinnier, put it back, blah, blah, blah. But ultimately now you can see I have a pretty good line down these sides. That corner tucks in a little bit, but it was it was swinging way out. So pull that back in where it goes. This side here, you know. So it's not not a perfect reveal, but you know, it's pretty darn good for the bus. And then that piece of molding's just laying there. But when I get a longer piece, I'll bring it back and. Uh, I'll screw a piece onto that angle so that whole thing will be covered up with that molding. So, that's awesome. So, all we did was put base molding around the bottom of it. But because down here, there was that angle iron to support the two bottom corners, I connected it with Velcro out there in the middle for about a foot with some Velcro tape. And then anchored these two screws into the frame so if we need to get back in there, probably would be mostly to clean the dust out from in behind. We can just pull them screws and then take it loose from the Velcro. But it's amazing the transformation that made with the, with the bed. And we had to uh, trim these corners off of these because they so they would clear that molding, but we're golden now. I think it looks awesome. I do too. And then you want to tell them what we did over here this morning? Yeah, we covered up the, the lines to the mini split. I just got one more thing to fix right here. I got to make a little cover for this. But that's like really great to have that stuff under cover. It doesn't look so raw sticking out. I know. Room. It just it made a huge difference. Okay guys, I have to be honest, it feels so great to have some of those little projects done that have been hanging out there. So we're going to go ahead and end the video here and just know that we love sharing the journey with you all and um, we will just catch you in the next one. Have a wonderful day. Love to you all. Bye.